gene cloning simply means making more similar kind of DNA. It is lot similar to a copying machine. In the copying machine, you give your input document which is copied. And in a molecular level, you need a machine which can copy your exact gene of interest. And that could be achieved by bacteria which could work like a copy machine. Now in a copying machine, you give your copy of your document and select the number of copies and you get the number of copies you want, right? Now in case of bacteria, you put your gene of interest inside a plasmid and put the plasmid inside the bacteria. Now itself, the plasmid is an extra chromosomal DNA. Some bacteria possess more number of plasmid and some bacteria possess less number of plasmid. Question is, what is the advantage of having different copy number of plasmid? And because generally in perspective of a genetic engineering point of view, more copy number of plasmid would be beneficial. Now let's just try to look at that how bacteria regulate their plasmid copy number. Now one good thing about the bacteria is if you put the plasmid inside the bacteria and give the bacteria proper nutrients and temperature to grow, the bacteria would grow in their number and our gene of interest would also grow in their number, right? And bacteria should, none other than less, bacteria should uh, regulate their plasmid copy number because otherwise it would cause a huge energy burden into the bacteria because the many plasmid would have replication on transcription demand so that would cause energy burden and if you have too less amount of plasmid in the bacteria then there is a possibility that over generations the plasmid would get lost and most of this plasmid encodes for antibiotic resistance and in other, other important stuff so if the plasmid is lost, then it could be detrimental for the uh, bacteria and even uh, compromise its survivability, right? Now, the question comes, how do they regulate their plasmid copy number? So here is a plasmid, which would be replicated to two identical plasmid. And the replication starts from the origin of replication site. Now, near the origin of replication site, there is a portion of the DNA which encodes for an RNA which is known as RNA2 and the same DNA segment in an opposite direction transcribes and forms RNA1 and these two RNA are the important players to regulate plasmid copy number. One of the Im most important of them is RNA2. RNA2 binds to the origin of replication when the replication bubble is forming and RNA's H family sort of cleaves the tail of RNA2 which could serve as a primer and the replication can start from there. Now you can understand that if the plas bacteria has a high plasmid number then RNA2 is mostly transcribed in that particular bacteria, right? On the other hand side, RNA1 which is exactly transcribed from the opposite strand of RNA2 so they are complementary to each other it could also be produced and it can base pair with RNA2. Now as a result when RNA1 and RNA2 is making a hybrid the RNA's H cannot bind and no primer for replication is there so replication cannot start. Now plasmid, the bacteria cannot make new copies of the plasmid right so most of the low copy number bacteria has these RNA1 and RNA2 production simultaneously as a result copies number kept in a chip. Now what happens, apart from these RNA1 and RNA2, there is another important uh, protein which is encoded by a nearby region to the origin of replication known as RPO1, ROP1, ROP1. And this ROP1 does an important thing. ROP1 generally binds to RNA2 and facilitates the binding of RNA1. And as a result, it prevents the replication to happen by preventing the RNA's H to bind, right? And not allowing it to form the primer for replication initiation. And here is some example of high copy number plasmid and low copy number plasmid. So PBR322, which is a well known plasmid, is actually a low copy number, whereas PUC19 is a high copy number plasmid. So when we say a low copy number plasmid, it has only 10 to 20 copies of the plasmid per cell. Whereas in case of the high copy number plasmid, it has 500 to 700 copies per cell. 
Now, I hope you understand the concepts behind copy num plasmid copy number re regulation. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for continuous notification. And if you have specific questions, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you.